Good afternoon, I'm Scott. Welcome to the root of it all. I am in the process of installing a tire pressure monitoring system on our new uh, Grand Design Solitude 2930RL-R. Most cars these days have TPMS systems built into them where the car will keep track of what your tire pressure is and if you're starting to run low it'll beep at you alarm and let you know, hey, stop, fix this please. Well, most trailers don't have that built into it, but it's as important if not more important for a trailer than it is for a car you don't know necessarily know what's going on back there so it's really really vital to keep tabs on how your trailer tires are doing if they're in need of any maintenance any need of any air you really got to keep them properly inflated A blowout on a trailer can range from annoying to just pure catastrophe. Now we took a look at a few different versions and the one we settled on was the Truck System Technologies Tire Monitoring System, the 4 sensor package. Our truck already has a TPMS system built into it. The kit comes with a display with a dash, dash top mount if your vehicle has a flat enough and sturdy enough space for it. If not, it has a suction cup mount that you can attach to your windshield. It has a built-in battery that um, should be good for most day trips or most trips. Don't continue to leave it plugged in while it's fully charged. Only plug it in whenever it's not fully charged. So what we'll do is we'll run it on its internal battery until the battery runs low and then we'll plug it in and let it charge. We have the version that has the sensors that are they're called flow-through sensors, meaning we can um, screw them into the tire and then fill the tire without having to take the sensor off. We can do that because we have metal valve stems on our tire. These are they're lightweight, but they're heavy enough that if we had a rubber valve stem, it would cause that valve stem to crack and leak. If you have the rubber valve systems, they have a cap version that's a lot lighter and it's just it replaces the cap that you have on your valve stem with the sensor. Now if you ever need to inflate those you have to remove the cap and then you can inflate your tire and then put the cap back on. There's a third option called the internal mount sensor and it has a band that goes around your wheel inside your tire that straps the sensor directly to the wheel itself and there's no external mount for it at all and you can use that regardless of which type of valve stem you have. We didn't go that route because you have to actually remove the tire from the rim to be able to put it on there. Now if you're putting new tires on your rim, great, you just put those sensors in at the same time. If not, it's a bit more of a pain to get it on there. One of the advantages though is the battery is good for about four years. With the cap style sensors or the flow through style sensor, you have to change out the batteries in those once a year. Since we're using the cap style sensor, we have to lock it to the valve stem. And that's what these little brass nuts are for. They go on the valve stem first, then we screw the um, sensor on. Once that's attached, then we can use this wrench here to slide over the sensor and tighten the nut. When you tighten the nut, it will lock it in place so that it doesn't accidentally come off or keeps mischievous people from taking your sensors. Also included in the kit is a repeater. This repeater hooks up to a 12 volt power supply and then repeats the signal so that you, inside your truck you have a nice strong signal. This repeater mounts inside your trailer and hooks up with these two little cables to a 12 volt power supply and then you put this in your front garage and you, it comes with some double-sided sticky tape, with some Velcro, and a pair of screws. You can pick your mounting point. The repeater's function is to take the weak signal from the sensors and then boost it up so that it has all the strength it needs to reach the display unit inside of your truck. It's not 100% necessary on as short of a rig as we have. Our trailer is only 34 and a half feet long and it's a gooseneck or fifth wheel. We have a gooseneck on it. And so our wheels really aren't that far from the truck. 
we should be able to receive the signal just fine, even without having the repeater. Other things that are in the box are, of course, your instruction manual, a please remember to uh, register your product for warranty purposes, the mounting hardware for the receiver, and it comes with stickers that you can put on these sensors so that you know which position they're going to be in because you're supposed to program the sensors before you mount them to the tire. Now if you have the internal mount sensors, the procedure is a little different, but we're not doing that. <laughs> Obviously we have the flow through sensors. This system can handle a very large number of tires. You can program up to 25 tires for each trailer. You can program up to four trailers. Well, we only have one truck, but it has a built-in system, so we're not going to worry about that. You program a sensor for a given position, and that's where it shows up on the display. Since I want the tires to represent where they are on the trailer, we're going to use position T14, T15, T18, and T19. Before we actually program the sensors, what we have to do is make sure the limits on the display are where we want them. That's the low pressure limit, the high pressure limit, and the temperature limit. So that if any one of those values is exceeded, then we get a good alarm and it's actually a valid alarm, not just a random beep, beep, beep that we have to investigate and see what the heck is going on. The defaults are 100 PSI for the low pressure. That's good, that's what we wanted. It's about 10% below where your rated pressure is. Our high pressure alarm needs to be set at about 25% above your normal running pressure. In our case, we're gonna set the high pressure alarm for about 140 PSI. There's also a temperature alarm that you can adjust the, the threshold for. The default there is 158 degrees or otherwise known as 70 degrees Celsius. Now, really that's a good number right there. There's no real reason to change it unless you're running a very particular tire that has some other uh, requirements. One last thing that you want to make sure of before you actually program the sensors is that your receiver is set to the proper units. You can choose PSI or millibar. Um, I'm used to PSI so we're going to stick with that. You can also choose Celsius or Fahrenheit for temperature. First thing we're going to do is turn the unit on and let it wake up. Now that it's alive, well, it has a full battery and isn't reading anything. It's set currently to Fahrenheit and PSI for temperature and pressure, so we don't need to make any adjustments there. Okay, so the first thing you do is press and hold set until it beeps. There's the beep. Now we're going to set the low pressure first. There you go. Low pressure set. Now we hit set again, and now we choose which axle and it will go through that's how you adjust the pressure we're at 100 that's where we want so you press go to cycle through the different axles and you can set a different pressure limit for each axle and our case we want all the pressures to be 100 that's good so we're going to go back one and now we're going to go to high pressure set and then we'll hit set and then now we're going to come down and set the high pressure to 140. Now I'm setting it on all the axles to this. You don't have to set it on all of them. You can only set it on the ones that you need. I'm just being thorough because I'd rather have it set everywhere and not have any confusion or question. And I'm pressing go in between each axle to cycle to the next axle. Note that it says one there, right next to the number, that little number one. That means we're adjusting the settings for trailer number one. We're not gonna set anything else because well, we only have the one trailer. So high pressure is now set. And then low pressure and then high temperature. 158 okay and we're good to go so let's press back and we're done with setting the defaults now we have to program the sensors so we press and hold the set until it beeps 
and we're set to high pressure set so we're going to go low pressure high temp that's whether we want the units that's another set of units okay learn id so we press set again here and then now we're cycling through which tire position and having to scroll through and there that's the first tire that we want now we press set and then we take our sensor and the F's start flashing and then you touch it touch the sensor to the receiver in this position and you press go and as you can see it picked up the code from the receiver that's great now you hit set one more time and it's programmed and now we move on to the next wheel once you have the last one done then you press the back button and the back button again to get out of set mode and now it's beeping because they're all reading zero so you press a button and you just acknowledge the alarm and now it's time for us to go hook them up to the trailer here's our valve stem on the first tire that I'm going to mount so we pull the old cap off we screw on the little brass nut get it down nice and low so it's clear of the stem or clear of where this one's going to go on we screw this guy in get him nice and snug loosen the cap because with the cap on there the wrench actually can't reach that's snug we're going to finger tighten the nut and then once the nut's finger tight we're going to use the wrench to make sure it's not going anywhere okay I'm gonna have to use both hands once everything's on there and snug you put the cap back in and now let's go see if the um, receiver is actually reading a sensor for, or reading a pressure from the tire. Look at that, it's 88 degrees and 102 PSI. Actually, it looks like we need to put a little air in this tire. Good thing we have an air pump that's big enough. This one's at 100 PSI, still a little low. We're gonna add tire, air, air to all four tires before we travel next. Slowly but surely, we're making progress. I'm so used to the really, really loud air pumps. This one's quite impressive. It's not a fast pump, though. But it's a big enough pump to handle the pressures, and that's the important part. This display rotates through the tire's pressures every, ten sec every five seconds. It goes to the next tire. So it takes 20 seconds for it to cover all four tires. What I was doing is waiting for it to cycle through to the tire I was just inflating to make sure that I had it at the right pressure that this gauge and this gauge were both agreeing. You know, just double checking. The tire pressure monitoring system and the pressure gauge I have right here agree with each other, so that's a good sign. Oh, hello. It's angry that I haven't built all the tires yet. Get to work. This one was at 88 PSI. It was the lowest pressure tire, so it's taken the longest. We're at 103 PSI right now, another seven PSI to go. Thank you. You're welcome. I can cycle through all these. 112 PSI, 110, 111, 110. Good enough. 
Where's the 112 one? 112 is uh, door side rear. Oh, so the one that was low is now high? Oh, I'm sorry. I got the, I did let a little bit of air out there. I got it down to 110, which is where I wanted. Nice. So 110, 111. Yeah, I guess it's close enough. One off is pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> we were somewhere between five and 10 PSI low on the tires on the trunk as well. So I'm gonna inflate those too. Test it. We set it in its cradle and we turn it on and give it a couple of minutes. It should take within two or three minutes. It should read all of the tires. Here's hoping it's going to connect. And we had numbers for a second. It's reading three out of the four tires. So give it a, another minute or two for that one to come into sync. Shouldn't take much longer. This is how it's going to be going down the road? Uh, I was thinking either right there or potentially up here. We'll try having it mounted in this position right here. Um, good news is, is now it's reading all four tires, so we're farther away than we will be on a road trip day. We should be good to go. Sweet. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around while I did the install of the tire pressure monitoring system on our trailer's tires. If you like this type of video, let us know. Give us a thumbs up here. Um, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of it. And hey, if you really liked what we did, send us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Bye, guys.